Hi friends, and thanks for tuning in. In this video, we're going to go out to the console and do some hands-on, but let me first quickly explain what we're going to be building. We'll create two Linux EC2 instances, and on each of those, we're going to install a web server and just place a simple HTML page on them that says hello world, so we can easily see that they're working. In front of that, we'll be creating an application load balancer. Remember, we choose application load balancer because we're handling HTTP traffic from the users. And then we'll also need what's called a target group, which basically tells the load balancer route traffic between the instances in this group. All right, let's start by creating those two new instances. So I'll say launch instances. I'll go through this pretty quickly, but we'll select a free tier Linux AMI. Next, configure instance details. The only thing I'll change on this one is that I will select the availability zone US East 2A. When we go to create the second instance, we're going to select a different availability zone. So that just ensures these are highly available. And then scrolling down, under advanced details, we have user data. This is basically a script that will run when the instance launches. I do have a script right here, and this script basically is going to install a web server so that we can host web pages. And then we're going to create a simple HTML page or index.html that just says hello world, and then it's going to give the host name for this particular machine. So this script is only going to run the first time the server boots up. I'll copy that and paste it into here. Next, we'll add storage. We'll leave the defaults here. We want to add tags. We'll add a tag for name. And for value, it'll be instance one. This will just make it easier to distinguish our two instances. Next, we'll configure security group. I'll create a new one called ALB demo HTTP open. I have one called that already, so I'm just going to do a dash one. But basically what we need to do here is add a rule with HTTP open. So add a rule, HTTP, which works on port 80, and that's open to the world. When I go to create my second instance, this security group will already exist, so I can just select that as an existing one. We'll say review and launch, and launch. Here's the prompt about the key pair. I do have several key pairs created already, so I'll just select one of those and launch instances. All right, I'll say view instances. While that one's coming up, let's go through the same steps to create a second instance. So launch instances, go through this one quickly as well. Instance details. Here we want to select a different availability zone. So we're going to go with 2B. And then scrolling down that same script that'll create that hello world HTML page for us. Add storage, tags, here, name will be instance two, security group. So we're going to use that same one that we created earlier. This is going to be ALB demo HTTP open dash one. Again, that just has the port 80 for HTTP open. Review and launch and launch. I'll choose the same key pair and we're off and running. All right, so view instances. You'll see the first one here is initializing. Just to make things a little bit cleaner, I want to filter out all of these instances that are stopped. I was using these earlier for some other demos. To easily do that, you can just click on the plus zoom right here on one that's running, and that'll filter down to instances that are running. So these are the only two we care about at the moment. You'll see they're both initializing. I'll pause the video and be back in just a minute when they're both ready. All right, both of our instances are up and running now and they have passed their status checks. Let's just select the first instance. I'm gonna copy this public IPv4 address here and open up a new tab, which takes me to the Hello World page. Now, just a note, you don't wanna actually click on the open address here. This will automatically default to HTTPS, the secure connection, which we haven't set up yet. So that'll just load and load and do nothing, which is why I copied the IP address instead. All right, that was for the first instance. For the second instance, let me copy that. We'll open up this tab. I should get the hello world again, but you'll see that the host address here, the host name, 
is different. So we've got a 537 and a 2882. So that's how we can tell we're hitting different machines. All right, so the instances are up and running. Now let's go create a load balancer to route traffic between them. We'll do this from the EC2 console where we currently are, but you do need to scroll down to load balancers here and create load balancer. Now, because we're using HTTP, these are just for web pages. We want to select the application load balancer. So we'll say create. I'll give it a name. My first ALB. This will be an internet facing scheme. IP address type IPv4. Scrolling down. VPC, I've only got the one virtual private cloud, so we'll leave that one selected. And then it's saying to select at least one availability zone and one subnet for each zone. We'll get into more detail about that in the networking section, but I'm actually just going to select all of these here. So we'll have a very highly available application. Scrolling down to security groups. Let's create a new one for the load balancer. We'll call this ALB Demo SG. For description, we'll say allows HTTP from everywhere, which is what this is going to do. For inbound rules, we'll add a rule that does what we just said, which was HTTP traffic from anywhere, IPv4, and create security group. And it looks like that already exists with that name. I must have done one as I was preparing. So we'll just add a dash one at the end, create security group. And then back here on the load balancers page, just so you don't forget where we were, we're going to refresh this list. And let's find that one that we just created. There it is, ALB demo SG dash one. And then moving down for listening, here we're saying that the load balancer is going to listen on port 80. That's where our HTTP traffic comes from. And then we want to forward that traffic to a target group. So back to our slides, the target group is going to include these two instances that we created. We haven't created the target group though, but Amazon makes it really easy to do that right from the page. So we'll say create target group. This target group will contain instances. We'll give it a name, my ALB demo TG for target group. We'll leave everything else the default and say next. Now we need to select the two instances. These right here, instance one, instance two, you'll see they're both running. And then very importantly, you need to click this, include as pending below. Otherwise nothing is gonna happen. They won't actually get added. And now you can click create target group. All right, now back to our load balancers page, refresh your list here, and we should now see that my ALB demo TG scrolling down, just review everything we have here. Now I know there's a lot of steps. So to summarize, we're creating an application load balancer that's internet facing. We're using the security group we created ALB demo SG one, which has port 80 open for HTTP traffic. We're using three different availability zones in the VPC, so this will be highly available. And we're listening for traffic on port 80, which will then route to our target group that has my two instances in it. Whew. All right, so create load balancer. Now it might take a few minutes for it to be fully ready to go and ready to route traffic, but we can go take a look now. You'll see it's in a provisioning state. I'll pause the video for a few minutes and come back when it's ready. All right, the load balancer is in an active state now. And the moment we've been waiting for is to be able to go to this DNS address down here, the DNS name, I'll copy that. And we should be able to see that it's routing traffic between our two instances. So we'll open up a new tab, paste that in. And there's a hello world. So you'll see the host name there, the one that's ending in 2882. If we refresh the page, you'll see it's now going to the other host. And if I just keep refreshing, you'll see that it's toggling between the two. So traffic is being routed between those two instances by this load balancer. So that's how it functions when both instances are healthy. But let's say that something goes wrong with our first instance, it goes down. And we can simulate that in the console by selecting instance one and then instance state, I'll stop the instance. And if you refresh that, You'll see instance one is in a stopping state. Instance two is still up and running. So if we come into our target groups down here, scrolling down on the left, this is the one that I created for the demo just now. 
you'll see that this instance is reporting as healthy. It's the one that's up and running just fine, instance two, but this one is unused, which means if we go back to our load balancer and refresh the page, you'll see that it's staying with just that one host name because that's the only host available to route traffic to. If we were to go back and start up this instance one, it would automatically pick up and start routing traffic to it. If you found this helpful, think about hitting that like button so it can spread to more people, and also consider subscribing for other technical tutorials like this. Thanks so much for watching!